There is now overwhelming evidence about the impact of human activity on the Earth's climate. Each year, we send 10 billion tons of carbon into the atmosphere. At present, the planet can absorb only half of that. That excess carbon is causing temperatures to rise to dangerous levels with dire consequences. We must stabilize global temperatures. To do that, carbon emissions must not exceed what can be absorbed by the Earth's plant life, its soil, and the oceans. Modern cities, where most of us live, need enormous inputs of energy and generate huge outputs of waste. Currently, cities operate as linear open systems. We pull resources in with little concern about their origin. At the same time, we expel byproducts with little concern for the destination of waste. This open-ended approach is utterly unsustainable. We need to adopt a closed-loop system inspired by nature. A system where every output by a living organism is also an input, which replenishes the whole environment. To assure our own long-term well-being, we need to emulate the ecology of natural systems. While renewable energy sources like wind, solar, biomass and geothermal limit emissions, they are not being implemented fast enough. Coal and gas are still quite abundant and will be used in power stations for many years. The Ecological Sequestration Trust proposes that we turn the waste carbon from these stations into a useful resource to help restore the world's ecosystems. How? One answer comes from one of the Earth's most simple forms of life, algae. The Ecological Sequestration Trust proposes building large-scale algae bioreactors and anaerobic digesters next to existing coal and gas-fired power plants, using the CO2 emissions as a potent new resource. First, carbon captured from the flue gas is used to grow algae. There, in an array of vertical photobioreactors, carbon and sunlight combine to cause rapid algae growth. Algae, one of the most efficient photosynthetic organisms, can double its biomass in two days. Once a growth cycle is complete, the oils are processed into organic chemicals and fuel products, and the remaining plant matter is transferred to the anaerobic digestion facility. This process of emissions to biofuels efficiently uses the carbon that was previously being sent into the atmosphere. Carbon isn't bad, it just needs to be reintegrated into biomass. This integrated utility operation encompassing energy, water treatment and waste digestion is designed to work in the same way as the Earth's natural systems. Crucially, it puts carbon back where it belongs, into living matter. But that is a small part of a much bigger system change we will support by creating a new, fully integrated model that includes urban development, agriculture, forestry and water. Designed to be scalable, the model will be made available regionally on a worldwide basis. Our team of experts will work together with communities and local governments to create organic closed-loop systems indigenous to each region. The implementation of these systems will not only create a healthier environment through restored ecosystems, it will also generate jobs, stabilize economies, and restore pride of local cultures and traditions. The ecological sequestration initiatives that we're planning will require large investments, but the value we expect to create will enable those investments to be recovered quickly. We are told that over the next 10 years, we have to reduce total emissions going into the atmosphere and at the same time increase the biocapacity of the planet to absorb the balance. I've got three grandchildren and I'm desperately worried about their life in the future on the planet if we don't make changes quickly now.
What we have to do is move from using non-renewable resources wastefully and polluting the planet to using renewable resources efficiently in closed loops. However, we have to start now and we have to move fast.